It's been a bit of a busy time here in the new home cinema, so today I thought I'd give you a bit of an update of where we are and perhaps show you how things hold together with things like this rather basic curtain motor X10 remote controller. But also I've been sent a review copy of The Nest, which has only just come out today actually. It did have a theatrical release, but didn't do very well. And I can tell you, this film is pretty darn fabulous. So we'll go into that a bit later. Keep watching. The last time I showed you things here in the new home cinema, I just put the top masking in and that seemed to be working pretty flawlessly. Had the odd bug or two, but I sorted all those out. And then I thought I'd tackle the bottom masking, which I always knew was going to be more problematic. And indeed it has proved to be so. I think I've put too much on the existing eight foot roller blind, which is the device I used at the last home cinema. So I thought I'd just transfer that. I knew it worked and I'd just make it work somehow. I'd fashion it to Together. but I do think I need something more akin to an 11 foot roller blind and possibly 10 feet is the largest I'll be able to get so I might have to go down that route eventually but for now I've fashioned a solution that sort of works it's got a few bugs in it but over time I might be able to make it work almost flawlessly once more so we'll see what happens but this device now relies on a set of rollers from the 8 foot roller blind to get the cord into the right position behind the left hand mask so you can't see the cord in front of the projected image. It's not the sort of thing you usually think about but the top blind because everything there is above the screen it doesn't matter how many cords you have on it and so I have one down the middle to assist the two at the ends and it pulls up and down with no problem and the weight doesn't seem to matter of that one but the bottom one with the way I've done it I really need something a bit more solid something like wood but that would be far too heavy but at least then it would stay flat and I wouldn't need all these guides on the bottom to hold it in position to stop it flopping over. I think I need one more guide on the far left hand edge to keep it away from the side masking on the left because the left hand mask does get caught along the bottom mask and when it closes it doesn't close 90 degrees to the screen so you see a bit of an angle on the mask and I don't like that so something I've got to get to grips with. I know that in previous videos I've just told you that it all works off X10, all this automation, and I've showed the controller, and this is the basic controller you can buy to control up to 16 X10 powered devices, or control devices. There's eight sets of buttons there, that's one to eight, and that's on, and that's off. And how this works, there's actually an extra eight, you can flick that over and do nine to 16, but I haven't got that many yet. So it's, it's quite easy to just pick this up. Number one is the top and bottom masking because number one actually works on the transceiver, which is the device that receives the signals from this and that operates immediately. But there's always a slight delay when the transceiver receives a signal and sends it to one of the other devices, which, in this instance, the side masking is on number two. There's a slight delay between the on and the off commands being received by the device. So the top and bottom masking is more vital to get open and closed in a specific position. So therefore the immediate response of number one works well. Number three is the curtains, which I've got running off two motors now, and I've got to find two of the motors that run at identical speeds. I've just purchased a new one, which has not got a variable power supply like the motors I purchased around 20 years ago when I first put it together at our last home cinema. So I'm probably going to get another motor there. They're difficult to find in the UK now, but there are a few dealers on eBay selling them at around £120 each. And they are very easy to use. And how they operate as X10 is you tell the X10 to power up the controller that this motor is plugged into. It receives power and it will move to its next stop position. So what happens is it will move around, make a bit of a noise, they're not the quietest things, until that arm gets to here, then it switches it off. You turn it off here, so the X10 knows, the controller knows that power has been cut. You turn it on again, and it will rotate back round and then turn off again. 
So with two, once you've got two motors running in sync, one for each curtain, it's actually quite easy to keep them in sync because they run at fairly much the same speed, but they've both, both got the same stop and start positions. So it's surprising how that works, and it does mean you've got far less weight on a motor, which means there's less chance of wearing the motor out. But they are still available. They're not too expensive, and X10 itself is not too expensive either. So anyone who wants to have a go at this, you don't need a degree in some sort of science to make a basic home cinema work. But the top and bottom masking, once you get to about 10 feet wide, as I say, that's really pushing things a little. So if plans go ahead here, as we hope in the future, and we do enlarge this room a bit, I probably will either have, just have a top mask and no bottom mask, or maybe no top and bottom masking at all. And when we have a scope film, a full 235, 24 to one scope film, just the side masking will open and I'll zoom the video projector up or the Super 8 projector or 35mm projector. Simple as that. I had a press release about the Nest and attached to the press release was a trailer. So I ran the trailer and I thought, this looks like a really interesting film. So I asked for a review copy to be sent through and indeed it arrived last week. We watched it on Friday and um, it's coming out on Blu-ray and DVD, no 4K. But this is a very cleverly made film. It's a clever film actually, but the filmmakers have made this using 35 millimeter film and they did it deliberately because it's supposed to be set in the mid 80s and they wanted that gritty 80s look and they've deliberately given it a sort of muted filmic look using minimal grain, but it is there. So we're supposed to be thinking we're watching some sort of historical drama here. And uh, even though it's not that long ago, and many of us will certainly remember the 1980s and those boom years, this captures it really well. Now the film starts off in America and the family we're following, headed by Rory, the father, played by Jude Law, and his wife, played by Carrie Coon. They are both exceptional. They're living in America with their two children. Jude Law is clearly unhappy and his wife perfectly happy she's got what she's doing what she wants to do she's working with horses but he's unhappy and he wants to go back to his previous life in the city of london because he knows that things are just about to explode but unbeknown to everyone he's been in contact with his old boss and his old boss has offered him a job to head up a new organization within the business and so he talks his wife into it they head back to london and all is not as it seems the first indication is that when the mother and the children arrive he's already rented a massive mansion so he wants a sort of an almost mythical life and clearly something is not quite right with our Rory and his wife knows it but she loves him and goes along with everything but this film is really cleverly written and directed and it quite often sets you off on the wrong path and you're not really sure what you're watching. Are you watching some sort of thriller? Is there a bit of a ghost thing in here? Is someone going to kill themselves? I like films where even though I know I've enjoyed it it's just finished and then I think that was excellent because it really has sent you in different directions you're not sure which way it's going to go and then it all comes together and at the end of it you appreciate all the wonderful acting the storytelling the direction everything about it but I would say it's a really interesting film it's worth watching and the blu-ray must capture how it looked in the cinemas on its not a major theatrical release. I think COVID-19 did destroy a lot of films in the cinema and this one clearly didn't do as well as it should. And I have no hesitation in recommending it if you like really well acted, directed and made films. It's a bare bones release. There's just the Blu-ray disc within the case. There's no slip cover and there's very little in the way of special features on the disc, but there is a short making of that's quite interesting. You can clearly see from that that this was shot on 35 mil film and there's that trailer. There is DTS 5.1 sound and similar to the image quality, it is subtle. There is a two channel stereo option, although I didn't play it. And my presumption is that this is similar to a Matrix four channel Dolby stereo sound that we used to enjoy in cinemas in the 1980s when of course this film is set. A couple of other things to bear in mind. There is one rather strong sex scene and quite a bit of bad language. I recommend it. I think it's an expertly made film and it's perfectly played by all involved. So another one to stick on that ever increasing shopping list.
There's still a few jobs to do in this new home cinema. It took quite some time to get the curtain sorted out and I'm not really much of a seamstress so it was over to seamstress Susie to get those sorted and she did a rather good job so she was well worth marrying all those years ago. And um, okay enough joking about that, she does actually love the home cinema and watching films almost as much as I do. So the two of us have a lot of fun in here and hopefully we'll have fun for many years and this will actually get better and better over the years. And that's the great thing about having a home cinema, it's never finished and I'm pretty sure a lot of us around the world find that with our home cinemas. And in fact Stuart Hilliker is a fellow film collector and he's just done a bit of a conversion in his garage and that's a work in progress and he's doing a fabulous job on it and it looks like he and I are going to be talking some more because he wants to get into doing all the masking as well. And although I've shown all the motorization and the autom automation there's no reason to do that initially. I didn't 20 years ago when I first started doing it and I just left things on the pull cords so I could work it all out and get it all working as well as possible before I set about finding out how I could motorize it. So it's always good fun, it's never finished and you always want the next step to get better and better and that's one of the great things about this hobby of ours. Anyway, until the next video, bye bye for now.